If mental space equals physical space, then this room is an extension of my mind. My mind overflows with ideas that compel me to create. I needed a space that promoted creativity. Somewhere for me to practice my craft for days and days on end. Some people call this space the edit cave, but I call it the space temple. To be honest, it doesn't really mean much. My friend just called it that once and the name kind of stuck. But I do spend a lot of time in here, and I balance it out with plenty of sunshine and exercise. I've learned a lot in this space, so I thought I'd share some tips. Ergonomics keep you comfortable and efficient. A motorized standing desk is a game changer for any workspace. Along with a good desk, invest in a mouse that fits your hand. Clutter on your desk is clutter in your mind. Keep your desk clean and tidy and useful. I like to make a lot of notes and print labels for numbers and references that I often forget. I'm not a fan of working with sweaty hands. That's why I'm this little hand fan's biggest fan. Having multiple screens saved me so much time. And when time is money, it's worth the investment. And so is good audio. These monitor speakers are easily my favorite studio investment to date. Everything just kind of sounds better. Good gear is not cheap. Start small and work your way up. Work hard to buy yourself tools that will elevate your skills. Or don't. You don't have to listen to me. There's probably a thousand things I'm doing wrong, could be doing better, or just different. I'm still learning simple stuff that I wish I had known years ago. I hope this video helps you learn a new skill, maybe a new word, or at the very least, gives you a little inspiration. First and foremost, organization. I like to keep my digital folders and projects as tidy as my desktop. All my projects start with a group of empty folders. For all my footage, my Adobe files, any separate audio, all my jams, all my sound effects, any still images, screen caps and YouTube thumbnails, photos if any, and all my final exports. Here's a quick life changer. Drop any folders you wish to access quickly in the favorites on your navigation sidebar. Practice good file naming conventions and start all projects with a consistent format. I like to include the date and version number in mine. Before you begin, double check your scratch disk locations. Video editing creates a whole bunch of new files on your computer, so know where your files are being saved. My folders inside Adobe are pretty much the same as the first, with the addition of a sequences folder. My footage folder is usually divided down into days, and then into cameras. No matter what program you choose to edit with, get to know the place and make yourself at home. Move stuff around, try new layouts, and explore the preset workspaces. I'm always changing my workspace around, but here's the latest setup that I'm pretty stoked on. I select clips on the file browsers on the left, while I do most of my work on the right with the timeline and effect controls. Then I watch playback on the top or the bottom. It's time to drop in. Import your clip from the media browser into your project folder by right-clicking and importing, or just dragging it over. Select your starting in point with the I key and your ending out point with the O key. Drag it on over. If you just want video, drag from the little film strip. If you just want audio, drag from the little waveform. And just like that, we're making movies, baby. When you want to drag a clip up or down but don't want to lose its position in time, hold the shift key to lock it horizontally. Click and drag a clip while holding the option or alt key to copy clips on your timeline. Click and drag on just the video if you only want to duplicate video. And do the same on audio if you only want audio. That's right, more organizing. Be an extraordinary human being and rename your clips. Become super extraordinary by labeling with color. And while we're at it, rename your tracks. Basically just organize as you go and you won't find yourself overwhelmed in a sea of indistinguishable files. So now you've just started this thousand piece puzzle and you don't know where to start. I get most of my inspiration from music, so I often start with a good track. If my project has a ton of footage, I might start with something I call a select sequence. What I do is I drag and drop all or a chunk of my footage onto one timeline and play it. As I watch, I cut and drag all of my favorite clips to track 2 for easy identification. I find this technique very useful for cutting GoPro or interviews, but honestly there's no bad place to start. Just like a puzzle, you can start somewhere on the edge or in the middle, but really you have no freaking idea what's going on and you're just going with the flow. 
So let's speed things up with some shortcuts, shall we? Uh, yes, a classic. Press these keys a lot. Press these keys like they owe you money. Move stuff around with V, a basic premiere key. Cut stuff with C, the razor tool. I like W for zooming in and Q for zooming out. You're gonna use I all the time and O just as much. Pen tool is lit. I wish I knew about A earlier. That's a good one, that's a good one, and that's a good one too. You may be wondering what I do with these 12 buttons on the side of my mouse. At this very moment, I have them set to properties, razor, copy, sequence settings, effect controls, paste attributes, nest, text, remove attributes, playback, and a couple on the sign. I really like this mouse, so I'm giving one away. If you'd like to enter, just read the contest details in the description below. Good luck! Sound effects can be hard, and not knowing what to search can be half the battle. Here's some useful keywords. Like I said before, get to know your way around. Experiment with effects and have fun. Remember, it's an art, not a science. I just did all of that with keyframing. Keyframes allow you to animate and give things life. Here, I'm gonna do a really simple move between two frames. One for my starting position in the corner, and one for my ending position in the middle. Once you set the two frames, the computer does the rest for you. Got it? Good. Next, find your rhythm. Good pacing makes for great videos. I like to hit the M key on beat to make markers on my music track. Make a couple adjustments and you'll have a bunch of perfectly timed beats to snap footage to. Pancake editing is when you have two timelines stacked like flapjacks for quick drag and drops between sequences. Adjust tones and contrast in your footage by learning how to use the curves tool and how not to use it. Another useful curve is the Bezier curve. Use it with keyframes to smooth fades and animations. Try out Adobe's automatic color matching tool. It's actually fire. Can you see and hear what's happening with these J-cuts? I brought my N64, all my games, two guidebooks, and a duotang full of cheat codes. Cool, but why couldn't we just use my TV? Your TV's way too small. If we're gonna pull an all-nighter, we can't be straining our eyes. Let's see that again. I brought my N64, all my games, two guidebooks, and a duotang full of cheat codes. Cool, but why couldn't we just use my TV? Your TV's way too small. If we're gonna pull an all-nighter, we can't be straining our eyes. Cuts like these keep your pace fun, fast, and interesting. Nesting is basically a sequence within a sequence. It helps you simplify your timeline and make room for creativity. All you do is right-click one or more clips, hit nest, and boom, editception. Now I have two sequences, my moose and my main timeline. Any changes I make to my moose will carry over to my main edit. I've added text on my moose timeline. I'll move over to my main timeline and decrease the size of the nested sequence on that timeline. I'll drag another clip underneath and now you can see the two layers of sequences. And that's about all I got. Seem complicated? Well, it kinda is. I didn't learn this stuff overnight and like I said, I'm still learning. But there's a lot more you can learn on your own below. And there's plenty of helpful resources that do a far better job of teaching than I do. And speaking of helpful resources, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for the creative. With over 25,000 classes in creative, business, and technology, you can find lessons and tutorials for that new skill that you're just yearning to learn. Annual membership is affordable at less than $10 a month. Plus, you can find just about everything you need to know about editing using your favorite editing program. Heck, there's no limits to what you could learn on Skillshare. Just the other day, I accidentally learned how to macrame. But wait, there's more. The first 500 clicks on the link below will get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. That's right, so act quick. And while you're at it, consider supporting us by stopping by the IFHT store for some groovy merchandise. And if you found this video helpful or fun, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and boogie every day.